Good morning, grade 10 learners! It's nice to be with you today. Welcome to another online learning engagement here at Valenzuela Live. I am Teacher Noemi, your virtual teacher for this morning, and your partner in making this day not just wonderful, but a day filled with interesting activities. For your attendance, just don't forget to type or key in the name of your school and your respective section. Let me begin by reminding you of the following. Number one, be sure to have your learning pocket with you. It will be quite easy to go along today's lesson if you can follow our module. Number two, jotting down important notes will definitely help you focus and understand today's lesson. So make sure you have your pen and paper with you. Number three, Set a respectful tone. In doing so, we are building a positive digital environment that embraces learning and discovery. Today's episode is actually a continuation of last week's lesson. This morning, we target to hit the most essential learning competency, use a variety of informative, persuasive, and argumentative writing techniques. We will also be aiming to enhance this subscale. Use words and expressions that affirm or negate. We will also be using quarter three, module four of our learning pocket, written by Mom Rochelle Season, Master Teacher One of Big Nine National High School. Are you ready for today's lesson? Then get it rolling. To start with, how about engaging on this activity, entitled, Meat Busters? I will show you a set of meats about COVID-19, and you will try to share your stance by posting your answer on our comment box below. Don't worry! To make it easier for you, I will provide you with choices. You just have to choose between those two choices. You'll also be given a few seconds to think, and write down your answer. Are you ready? Let's begin. Meet number one. COVID-19 is a big deal for young people. Well, what will be your answer? Is it definitely or never? Write down your answer. Myth number two, COVID-19 does spread in very hot or cold weather. Is it exactly for you or hardly? Think twice before you answer. Myth number three. Home remedies can protect against COVID-19. Absolutely or contradictorily? Type in your answer. Let's proceed to the last meet. Meet number four. There is currently a cure for COVID-19. Is it obviously or scarcely? I am seeing a lot of answers on the comment box. You definitely deserve a round of applause. Thank you very much for actively participating, grade 10 learners. I'm sure you're all excited to get the facts straight about those different memes. I do not want to keep you waiting, so let's all watch and discover the truth behind those memes.
There's a lot of news going around about COVID-19. Sometimes it's hard to tell fact from fiction. Let's tackle a few common myths. Myth one. COVID-19 isn't a big deal for young people. Actually, people of all ages can be affected by COVID-19. Even wizards? Even wizards, Harry Dotter. In fact, the Center for Disease Control reports that of all COVID-19 cases, 35% are in people 49 and under. And one in five people hospitalized for severe COVID-19 were between the ages of 20 and 44. But perhaps the greater danger is that young people may spread the virus to those most vulnerable to COVID-19, people with other health problems and the elderly. So let's look out for each other by staying home and stopping the spread. Myth two. COVID-19 doesn't spread in very hot or very cold weather. Based on current data, coronavirus can spread in all types of climates. Sorry, Dots. Myth three. Home remedies protect against COVID-19. Despite what you may have seen on social media, teas, mouth rinses, essential oils, and other home remedies do not work against COVID-19, and cleaning products like bleach should never be swallowed or injected. Myth four. There is currently a cure for COVID-19. In short, not yet. Some people have looked to antibiotics for treatment. While antibiotics work great for bacterial infections, they don't work for viruses, like coronavirus. Using antibiotics for viruses is a bit like cleaning your house with a pickle. It doesn't work. You may have also heard of hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, and other medications being used for COVID-19. While certain drugs may have some benefit, it's unlikely that we'll find a cure quickly. What we need is more research. Research that clearly shows what is safe and effective against COVID-19. Unfortunately, news stories have sparked big demand for hydroxychloroquine, taking this drug away from people who need it for other conditions. So what can we do? We can arm ourselves with information from trusted sources like the World Health Organization, Center for Disease Control, and your local health authority. Together, we can spread accurate information and not infection. Wow, that was definitely a very informative and timely video, and I'm sure you learned a lot. Now, going back to all your responses about those meats, what do you notice to the pool of choices I had given you? How do you call those expressions? You got it! We call those expressions words of affirmation and negation. Affirmation and negation are often used in conversation, particularly as responses to questions. Being able to express your opinion and to agree or disagree can make a conversation a lot more fun and interesting. Are you familiar with the lines of this song? Anything you can do, I can do it better. Let's hear it once more. The lines from this song makes use of negative and positive statements. But of course, they express their stance in a playful and joyful manner. Take note that just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean that a friendly relationship is not possible. In fact, both agreements and disagreements or negating or affirming are part of any relationships. 
what important, especially when you are disagreeing with someone, is the manner of how you disagree. There are many phrases and words that are used to express affirmation and negation. Let's check onto that. Affirmation is also called affirmative or positive statement, which expresses the truth or validity of an idea. Among the commonly used words for affirming are adverbs of affirmation. These include words such as yes, surely, definitely, certainly, doubtlessly, exactly, and obviously. These are called adverbs of affirmation because they tell about a level of certainty the speaker has. Negation, on the other hand, is called a negative statement and it expresses a denial or falsity of an idea. Among the commonly used words for negating are adverbs of negation. Adverbs of negation include the word no, not, nowhere, no longer, never, hardly, contradictorily, and scarcely. Adverbs of negation are completely opposite from affirmation. They show that the speaker doesn't believe there is a chance that things will go the way they say. It means that the action is certain to fail or go directly opposite to what the speaker expects. Now let us have some sample sentences using adverbs of affirmation and negation. Example, do you follow health protocols? It's either you can answer affirmatively like, Definitely, I always follow health protocols. Or maybe your response is in the other way around. I hardly follow protocols, to be honest. You're actually negating since you are using adverb of negation hardly. Another example. Are you doing fine in the new normal setup? What can be your response? It can either be you're affirming or negating. Absolutely, things are going fine in the new normal. Or maybe you can answer differently. Not really, things are going entirely different in the new normal. I hope I make everything clear, my dear grade 10 learners. Give me a thumbs up if you can follow. This time, let me give you a bit-sized info about the culprit of this new normal. How long has it been since the new normal? More than a year, right? And I'm sure you want to know the mastermind of all this. However, as you watch the next video, I want you to take down notes and be ready for the next set of exercise. Hello, my name is Coronavirus. I'm sure you've heard my name before, but you may not know an awful lot about me. I'm really, really small. Even if you used a microscope, you wouldn't be able to see me. And there are lots and lots of copies of me. Can you guess how many copies of me would fit onto the end of a tiny pin? Well, the answer is millions and millions. Viruses like me are all over the world. Lots of us live on skin or clothes or toys and most of them don't do any harm. But some of us, like my cousins Flu and Common Cold, do sometimes make people a bit sick. When I make someone feel sick, they have a disease called COVID-19. I'm all over the news and social media at the moment. It's important to remain calm and sensible. You may hear a lot of silly stories about me online or rumours about me from a friend. So let me introduce myself with some facts. I love travelling. I jump from person to person through coughs, sneezes and touch. When I come to visit, I might make you feel hot and start coughing. None of these things are very nice and can make some people very sick. But I don't hang around for long and almost everyone gets better. To help make everyone safer, make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water often for at least 20 seconds. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue or your sleeve when you sneeze or cough. Achoo! Try not to touch your eyes, mouth or face. 
don't touch other people. This means no handshakes, no hugs, and no high fives. Also, remember that older people are more likely to be sick when I'm around. So, to keep your grandparents and others extra safe, be really careful around them. If you feel hot or start coughing, <coughs> make sure to tell whoever is looking after you. If you follow this advice, I'll stay away unless people will be sick. Now you know, coronavirus, although really small, is capable of defeating big giants. Small but terrible indeed. It is now time to check whether you can easily identify the word that leads to either affirmation or negation on the given video. Write down your answer in the comment box below. Take note that you will write the adverb use and identify if it's used as negation or affirmation. You will be given a minute to finish this. Time's up! Easy as a pie, right? If your answer is the same as this one, then congratulations! You nailed it! Good job! For any questions about today's topic, don't hesitate to let me know your queries because I am more than willing to answer. A minute will be given to you to type in your question and our teacher moderator will gather them. Our first question is from a virtual learner of Wawampulo National High School. Should I avoid using double negatives? A double negative is when two negative words or constructions are used within a single clause. Sentences with double negatives are not grammatically correct and they are confusing. They are said to be informal or slang in modern English. Like for example, I don't see nothing. I don't see anything. This usage is frowned upon by many people, even if used in speech, unless ironically. In the case of negative adverbs like barely, hardly, rarely, even though they don't have no, they still have negative connotation. Our second question is coming from Disciplina National High School. What should you consider before negating or affirming on a certain topic or issue. As discussed earlier, affirmation is agreeing to a given argument that expresses one's view in a particular subject, while negating is exactly the opposite. When affirming, 
perhaps you should consider if it does comply with your beliefs. Or are there any supporting facts to strengthen your idea? When negating, on the other hand, you should think about what makes it wrong or unacceptable in some way. You need to open up your mind and try to understand both the situations in the third person's shoes. Our third question is coming from Linguna National High School. Aside from adverbs, can you give expressions that you may use to affirm or negate? Nice question! Before I answer, you have to understand, my dear learners, that in life, you have to say no and say yes a lot of times. I know it's not easy. In fact, sometimes it can be tough to say no that you end up giving in. And just saying yes or maybe it's the other way around. It's human nature. We want to be agreeable. We want to be liked. And we want to be kind. So how do you say yes or no without feeling guilty? Aside from adverb of affirmation, you can also use these expressions. That's right. No doubt about it. Certainly. That is absolutely right. I have nothing against it. Yes, you're right. That is indeed great. Expressions that negate. I respect you for that, but... Pardon me, but... I have nothing against your point, but... I know what you're trying to imply, but you have a great point. However, I'm sorry, but I understand that. However, thank you so much for actively participating in our question and answer. I am sure that you will be able to complete the task in your learning pocket. For more information and other queries, your English language teacher would be more than happy to assist you. Before we end, I would like to thank our technical support teacher and teacher moderator for their contribution in making this learning engagement a success. It is a pleasure indeed to have you today in our virtual engagement. I hope you learned a lot and enjoyed our activity. This has been Teacher Noemi, and see you again next time for another episode of Virtual English Class, only here at Valenzuela Live. Keep safe, everyone!